Hey everyone, welcome back to part 3 of the full assembly process. The build's really taking shape now and every step brings us closer to a finished Jetta. The robotic arm swings into place, lining up the dashboard with the car body. Once it's in position, a nut is threaded onto the dashboard bracket. An electronic wrench locks it down tight. Both sides are secured before the arm pulls away. A wiring pack is opened and the clips on the harness snap into the guide holes along the A-pillar. USB and sunroof control wires are clipped into the holes running across the front roof frame. The side curtain airbag wires and rear reading light cables are fed through the sunroof drain tube, then clipped into the roof's guide holes. Another wiring pack is opened to prep for the next steps. Now, the dashboard assembly is fully joined to the body, a deflector is fitted over the air conditioning intake. Sitting neatly on the water channel, the right side harness clips lock into the body. On the left, the headlight harness is routed along the side rail with unused wiring tucked inside for later. The harness is clipped into the water channel openings. Same for the right headlight wiring. Next comes the water chamber cover and its brackets. The cover is mounted over the channel, and two brackets are fixed to the brake booster. A powered torque wrench secures the screws on both sides. Above the driver's seat, wiring is clipped into the roof guide holes. The vanity light harness is routed through one guide hole, pulled out from another, and clipped in place. Under the left side of the dashboard, another wiring pack is opened. The wires are straightened, clipped into guide holes along the A-pillar and the door sill and the door harness connector is plugged in. Once clipped, the harness to the front engine bay is connected to the fuse box under the dash. Another set of connectors is clipped into body openings and matched by color. The right side harness is installed the same way, except it skips the fuse box connection. Clips secure the wiring along the right side sill. The seatbelt pretensioner wire is clipped near the seat. Rear door wiring is fitted along the B-pillar, clipped to keep it neat. More clips are added as the wiring is straightened. From the rear seat latch area, the trunk harness is fed into the trunk, secured in the guide holes, then connected to the signal amplifier and signal modulator. The rear seatbelt tensioner wiring is clipped in, followed by the collision sensor connection. The keyless entry module harness is clipped under the rear seat, plugged in, then connected to the shark fin antenna. Clips secure it along the underside of the car. Oil stains on the fender are wiped clean. A side emblem tool is set in place, the emblem's protective film and backing removed, and the emblem pressed onto the fender. The side marker light harness is plugged in, then the tool rolls over the emblem three times for a firm bond before being removed. An electronic driver tightens the bolts between the dashboard and the body, then the bolts between the dashboard and the central channel. A rubber grommet and clip are fitted to the sunroof drain hose, which is routed to the drain hole under the wheel arch and clipped in place. Another wiring pack is opened and the rear USB wiring is clipped to a guide post under the central channel. A grommet is fitted to the left rear wheel arch. The tail light harness is routed through the parcel shelf and into the trunk, clipped into the body openings, passed through the tail light opening, fitted with a grommet for waterproofing and secured with clips. The signal amplifier and signal modulator are plugged in and clipped. This harness powers the high mound brake light and the trunk light. At the back, sound insulation is tucked above the wheel arches. Ground wires are installed on the right sill by removing the nuts, 
looping the wires onto the studs and tightening them. The air conditioning drain hose is inserted into the dash opening. The airbag controller is plugged in, then the harness is clipped and grommeted for sealing. The fuel door lock wiring is routed through the guide hole and fixed in place. The right tail light wiring is installed the same way as the left. The rear bumper OCU wiring is routed through the trunk opening, grommeted for waterproofing, clipped in place and set aside for later installation. The ESP bracket is next. The wiring is clipped under the seat, the barcode is scanned into the system, and the bracket is bolted to the body. Grommets and brackets are installed in both rear wheel arch openings. An Atlas electronic driver tightens three bolts on the ESP bracket. Side curtain airbags are scanned, fitted, and clipped into the body openings. The rain wiper motor is scanned, mounted to the water channel, plugged in, and secured with three bolts. Passenger side reading light and vanity light wiring is clipped in. The sunroof switch harness is clipped and plugged in. The ESP unit is mounted on a base, scanned and tightened with two screws. Brake lines have their dust caps removed, then are connected to the ESP and master cylinder, each tightened with screws. All grounding wires across the body are secured. Left frame rail, driver sill, rear shelf, right frame rail, engine mount bracket, and passenger sill. The power cable is connected, positive to the relay and negative to the wiper motor. The MFT device plugs into the diagnostic port, scans the setup code, and runs the first electrical check. The raft, breakout cysts, bars, canopies, fences, and a lighter are scanned with the diagnostic port, scans the setup code, and runs the first electrical check. Anti-theft components are downloaded and hardware is initialized. Side curtain airbag clips are locked to the A pillar and the wiring clips into the C pillar openings. A cordless driver secures the inflator bolts, the harness plug is connected, and the side curtain bracket is tightened with two screws.